when we make something, whether it's a rug or a blanket or we paint a house or make a picture, why do we bother to make it beautiful? Why do we bother to add design and aesthetics to it? A blanket or a quilt you put on your bed would be just as efficient if it were plain. Why do we, and I use we in a very broad way, why do we as a people go to so much trouble to inject colour, balance, symmetry, design, form, aesthetics? Why do we bother? And so part of the book is looking at the concept of homo aestheticus, the fact that there is a drive within us to make things more beautiful than they need to be because it makes the world better. What I then do is try and extend this argument and say, well, can we take this from just design to politics, to sociology, to education, to media, to all sorts of things, and say, what is it drives us to make the world a better place than the world we inherited? And to do that, I go right the way back to the book of Genesis, where in Genesis, you remember, everybody had everything just the way they wanted it, as good as it could ever be, in the Garden of Eden, whatever you want, it's there. Then suddenly it all goes completely pear-shaped, mankind is thrown out of the Garden of Eden, and we have to start again. Well, you know, I think being thrown out of Eden was a huge opportunity for humankind. Thrown out of Eden, suddenly you discover your responsibilities, your needs to make the world a better place than the one you find. And we do that by taking the raw materials of lived existence, whether they're physical things such as clay or wool, and we make them through laborious processes into much more practical but also beautiful things. It's also the same with things like structures of government and concepts of democracy or freedom and the, the, the body politic. We try to make the world better than it would be if we just ran around in a state of very, very primitive unknowingness. So in my book, um, The Fall is an Opportunity, in my classics, Prometheus is a Hero.